and it has been 90 days since we have seen from the governor anything in the way of a complete budget proposal. In contrast, the Republicans have offered three. Uh, the first, of course, being our budgets. And the House passed a budget, the Senate passed a budget, and then we passed out of conference committee uh, complete revenues and expenditures proposals, which as you all know, on, on May 24th, the day after session closed, the governor vetoed those bills. And then on June 6th, we offered our second budget compromise in which we called what we called the Kids, Courts, and Cops. And uh, here we offered to meet the governor 100% of the way on uh, and almost 50% of the budget. We offered him his number on K-12, and we offered and we met his um, veto objections for public safety for, for the courts and cops at 100%. Uh, we never heard back from the governor on that. Then on June 16th, just last Thursday, once again, we offered him a third budget compromise. And here's what we said. We said, Governor, you want to raise taxes? We want to cut taxes. That's what we do as Republicans. We believe that taxpayers' money staying in their pocket is more effective at improving the economy. But we're willing to forego that. We're going to, we're going to you know, give up on our tax relief, which we feel is so important. You need to give up on your tax increases. What we've got in the checkbook is what we've got to spend. Uh, and then we took that additional $200 million incorporated in the kids, courts, and cops, and also addressed other funding issues that the governor expressed as concerns. Uh, and as you all know, uh, later that day, the governor also uh, said no to that offer. And so what we need now is the governor to come to the table. He's the governor of the state of Minnesota that in less than two weeks has a deadline of July 1st. The Republicans have been working every day trying to find ways to resolve this budget and the governor now needs to step up as the leader of the state and come to the table with a substantive compromise offer. He needs to let the people of Minnesota know where he wants to spend money and if he has reductions, where he would reduce. Raising taxes, making Minnesota the second highest tax state in the country during tough economic times will squash our economic recovery. No ifs, no ands, no buts. Other states have tried it the revenue that they expect to come in after they enact a massive tax increase never materialize. Rather than shut down government for a tax increase, a promise the governor made last October, he said in one of the forums that he participated in, I will not shut down government for a tax increase. I believe in the governor. I believe in his integrity. I believe in him being able to keep his word. We do not believe in a shutdown. We're not using some kind of uh, raw political power move to shut down the government. That's on him. That's on him. So call us back. Let's finish this up. But let's let's start with a few a few victories. You know that's what we've offered to the governor. Uh, let's start with some of those budget bills that we're so close on. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't you score a few runs just to start the ball rolling here? Why wouldn't you do that? So, ten days to go. We're here, we're here again, ready to work, and we hope the governor will come.